Hi everyone and welcome to Marvelous Designer and the Marvelous Designer interface, so I suggest we just get started. As you can see on first glance, the interface is divided into two different areas. On the right, we have our 2D window where we will draw and sew patterns. And on the left, we have the 3D window where these patterns are going to be simulated. And by that, I mean they're going to be affected by the laws of gravity resulting in draping. Now, this division can easily be changed by clicking these three buttons on the bottom right corner. So we can switch from a splitted view that we have right now to the 3D window where we can only see the left part or to the 2D window where we can only see our patterns. Since there are quite some tools available, let's try to break it down into sections. We have the upper toolbar, which we will explain later. Below the toolbar in the 3D window, we have a selection of tools that are meant for applying changes to the 3D simulation. So once the garment is draping, we can apply certain changes with the use of these tools. On the opposite side, we have a bunch of tools above the 2D window that are meant for manipulating patterns, drawing them, adding points, and sewing them together. We will get to know these tools in the upcoming clips. The history window on the bottom right tracks all the changes we make to the garment and creates a list of those changes. The property editor opens up settings and attributes whether it's for a pattern, seam line, avatar, or a fabric. So for instance, if I click on this fabric right here, you see that the property editor opens up a whole new list of the settings. And above the property editor, we have the object browser that is made up of tabs, such as the scene. The scene tab basically includes all of the objects that are within our scene. Then we have the fabric tab that offers a list of all of the fabrics that we have. And the button tab that also includes all of the buttons that we have in our scene and the buttonhole as well. So these are pretty self-explanatory. Now let's take a look at the upper toolbar a little bit more. So under the file, we have all of the standardized options that we are normally used to in other software. So basically opening a new document, opening an already uh, made document, or uh, adding garments from previously made files, and so on. So the option that is new here and that's interesting for us is the import option right here. With this option, we can import our own objects, or as they are called in MD, avatars. So if you're coming from a program such as Daz, ZBrush, or Make Human, and you already have a 3D human that you would like to use for your garments, you simply go to this option, and here you can see the possible formats that can be uploaded. And the import add just means that we can add besides from our avatar, also other objects that we might need. The next option that is also important for us is exporting. Once we are done with our garment, we can export them into these formats right here. Now the following tabs like Edit, 3D Garment, 2D Pattern, Sewing, and Materials basically include all of the tools that are already visible on our interface so we don't need to get into them separately maybe i would suggest going through these menus to quickly see the shortcuts that are available because they are listed right next to a certain tool the next important tab is the avatar tab so the first three options are meant for deleting the avatar but since we don't have an avatar in our scene right now we're just going to go to avatar editor there we go and a new pop-up opens up and here we are able to choose from a library of avatars and once I choose let's say this first female avatar I can also choose the style of haircut maybe different type of shoes also what is interesting here is the measure tab if we open it up then we can see that our avatar is accompanied with all the measurements including the height and circumference of let's say the arm or leg or something like that and sometimes these digits are very useful to us when we're making clothing. So right now I'm happy with the way it is and let's just close this. 
Now, before we start moving around the scene, let's discuss the view controls for a moment. Let's go to Settings, User Settings. Here you can see all of the shortcuts for the tools and you see if you click on them, you can also reset or delete them and create your own shortcuts. So this is very useful if you want to get to know the shortcuts. But what I wanted to show you is the view controls right here. So this is how I basically rotate around the scene or how I pan. And you see that under preset, I have the 3ds Max option selected. So what this means, it basically lets me move around the scene with the same keys as in 3ds Max. Now you can choose any kind of preset you feel comfortable with. Maybe if you have a tablet, maybe you normally work in Maya and this would be a good preset for you. But just so you know that when I'm explaining rotating and panning, it is for 3ds Max preset only. So let's close this. So as I said, rotating around the 3D scene is by pressing Alt and the middle mouse button. Panning is also with the middle mouse button. And zooming in is just scrolling back and forth. And the same applies for the 2D window, except for the rotation, of course, because we don't need it here. Now, also some of the useful shortcuts are the camera views. 5 is for the top view. 8 for the back. 6 and 4 are for the sides. And 2 is the front. This brings this clip to conclusion, and in the next one, we will be uploading a garment from the MD library.